Hey folks, Paul Abernathy here. Welcome to another lesson in our Fast Track system. Now, I get questions from time to time when it comes to things like an individual branch circuit to a water heater. Now, most people that deal in branch circuit sizing know that there is a 422.13, but there's also a 422.11, and they want to see how these play out. In other words, there is a minimum and there is a maximum application that you can apply when it comes to sizing not only overcurrent protection to a water heater, uh, but uh, again, the conductor sizing as well. So let's look at that in the code and maybe we'll clear things up for folks. So here's our lesson today. So we're running an individual branch circuit to our water heater. And here's what the rules are. Uh, and again, we have our call out, which is A in our program. And you see, we have a bunch of call outs that we'll look at, but here's our water heater right here. It's a 50 gallon, 240 volts, single phase. Its wattage total is 4,500 watts, okay? All right. So one of the beautiful things about our program is these callouts because, again, a lot of times with videos alone, you really can't put all the pieces together. So here, as you're reading it and you get a callout, you can then go look at the illustration. But let's not forget one of the fundamental things in our program is you see those chevrons where they have these little arrows between a code reference. That means you, when you get there, you want to stop and you want to go read it. And it's important that you have your code book handy so that you can go back and look at what the code says. All right, so let's get started here. So let's first calculate what the maximum overcurrent protection device would be. So this is for the maximum overcurrent protection for this water heater. Now, it says the overcurrent protection shall not exceed the rating marked on the appliance, okay? Typically, the water heater doesn't have any rating except for a wattage value on there, okay? So it says if the rating is not marked and the appliance is rated over 13.3 amperes, the overcurrent protection shall not exceed 150% of the rated current, all right? Now, where do we get all this from? So you see these chevrons right here? The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go look at the code, and we're going to be looking at 422.11E3. So let me go get there. And so that you can see, this is where we're at. I'll go and scroll up a little bit. So here's 422.11. There's A, B, C, D, E. So what's important about this is it says, if the branch circuit supplies a single non-motor operated appliance, and, and this is what you would have with a water heater, it's a non-motor operated appliance. It says, the rating of the overcurrent protection shall comply with the following. All right, now the reason we're using E3 is because if you look at E1, it says not exceeding the overcurrent protection rated marked on the appliance, typically not marked on the water heater, okay? But a, a typical storage type water heater, right? So the next you go to two, it says not exceed 20 amperes if the overcurrent protection rating is not marked on the appliance and the appliance is rated 13.3 amperes or less, okay? So we need to know which one we fall under. We don't know that yet. But you saw in the reference that we had in our lesson, now it says not exceed 150% of the appliance rated current if the overcurrent protection rating is not marked and the appliance is rated over 13.3 amperes, okay? So you're not to exceed 20, okay, if it's not marked and the appliance, when you do the math, is not over 13.3 amps or 13.3 amps or less, then not exceed 20 ampere. But in this case, you can't exceed 150% of the appliance uh, rated current, okay? If it's not marked and the appliance has a rating that's over 13.3, okay? Now, it says where 150% of the appliance rating does not correspond to the standard overcurrent device ampere rating, which is in 240.6A, by the way. That's where the table is for the different overcurrent devices that are standard. Here it gives you the provision to use the next size up rule. So you can go up to the next standard size overcurrent protected device. So E3 has got that next size up rule if it doesn't correspond when you do 150%. Okay. Now, the other one that folks look at all the time is down here in 422.13. So this is for specifically storage type water heaters that are what? that have a capacity of 120 gallons or less, it says the ampere rating of not less than 125% of the ampere rating of the water heater. So that's a minimum. So it can't be less than 125% of the ampere rating of the water heater, OK? 
okay? Again, so this is for the brand circuit, overcurrent device, and the conductor. So you see, this is really a minimum, and it can't be less than 125% of the, of the ampere rating of the water heater. Whereas the one we're looking at up here is a maximum, not to exceed 150%. Of course, we do have the next size up rule that allows us if it doesn't correspond. All right, how is this all working out? So let's go back and look. Okay, so in this case, we had to determine what that water heater's rating was. And of course, this case, it's 4,500 watts, right? So we got to do a little math here. We'll get started. We'll do this first. So I'm going to go 4,500, and, and we're going to divide that by 240, because it's a 240 amp, uh, volt water heater. So that is where you get the 18.75. So that's where we get the 18.75 right here. So that is the rating, okay, in current. And then it says it's not to exceed... 150%. Now, first thing is first, it is over 13.3. So that's why we're kicking into E3. It is over 13.3. All right, so 18.75 uh, times 150% is 28.125. Of course, we're going to round this to 28.13. Okay, so that's what our rating is. So I need to find a conductor that is rated for 28 or an overcurrent device that's rated for 28.13. Well, first of all, um, because we're just doing the overcurrent device right now. So if the rating does not correspond, you saw what it said, then we can go to the next standard size. So if you go to 240.6a, you're gonna notice there isn't one rated for 28.13. And I encourage you to pause the video, go look at 240.6a and look at the list. And you'll notice that there isn't one for 28.13. Okay, but there is one for 30. And remember what the rule said, if 150% does not correspond to a standard rated breaker, you can go what? To the next standard size. So this is a 30 amp rated overcurrent device. So the maximum overcurrent protected device is 30 amperes, okay? Important, makes sense. Now, that was A, and we'll just kind of look at A. So A is telling it, okay, there you go. That's the maximum size of the overcurrent protected device. Now let's look at B. What is the minimum conductor size is 10 AWG, because if you go to table 31016, because the overcurrent protection uh, shall not exceed 20 amperes for a 12, that's that little asterisk in 240.4D. If you look at 31016, you'll see a little asterisk beside the 12 gauge, and that tells you you gotta go to 240.4D, and you're gonna see that for 30 amps, the small conductor rules say that it's gotta be a 10 AWG. So, based on the minimum size, based on what we've done so far, based on the overcurrent device, then we're gonna have to have a minimum conductor size of 10, okay? Now, let's look at C. Now, C is the rule that's gonna be covering 422.13. It says the branch circuit overcurrent device and conductors for a fixed storage type water heater that have a capacity of 120 gallons or less shall be sized not smaller than 125% of the rating of the water heater, okay? So how do we do that? So now we're gonna show you the math, how that works out. And you're gonna see that it, in this case, it becomes moot but I want you to see. All right, so right here, it says first, divide the wattage by the voltage to find the amperes. So it's 4,500 watt element. Divide that by 240 volts. It gives me 18.75. We kind of already did that earlier, so we're good there. And then it says multiply the amperage by 125%. That's what it said in 422.13. So we're trying to find the minimum. So here, is 18.75 multiplied by 125%. Never gonna trust what we see on the screen, so we're gonna do it ourselves. 18.75 times 1.25, that's 23.4337. Uh, of course, we're gonna round this up to 23.44, make it simple. So the minimum ampacity required for this water heater is 23.44 amperes, right? The minimum for that, okay? All right. So what is that also gonna tell us? If this is the minimum size we need, now we're gonna go look at the National Electrical Code and just look at the ampacity tables. So here we are here. So let's go to uh, 31016 and just look at it. 
Okay, here's 310. Let me get down to 31016. And here's our 31016 right here. All right, and so here's those little asterisks I was telling you about. That just reminds you at the bottom down here to go look for the small conductor rules, the overcurrent protection limitations, okay? That's what it's kind of sending you there. And remember, HVAC motors and things like that, they have their own rules in 240.4D, which ends up sending you to tables that, that do things that are not the norm, okay? We're not gonna get into that detail in this episode, but I just want you to be aware of for general applications, and let's state it otherwise, again, a 12 gauge has to be protected by a 20 amp, a 14 by a 15 and a 10 by 30. All right, so in this case, we needed a conductor that was at least, even with the minimums of the uh, 422.13, even with the minimums, it was 23.44 amps. So when you come here under the 60, you come down and you got the 10 and it's good for 30. This 12 is only good for 20. So obviously that's not gonna work. So you have to jump up to 30. So 10 is still gonna be what's adequate here. So it's clear it's going to be a 30 amp overcurrent protected device, right? Uh, and again, because that's the maximum that you can go to, right? And of course, the conductor size cannot be less than a 10 gauge for this application as well, right? So hopefully that's helped you out in how you apply this. Um, you know, people ask me minimum. They say, well, Paul, if that is uh, 23.44 and I go to 240.4, uh, 240.6a could I put this on a 25 amp sure you could but that's a minimum okay the maximum would allow you to put it on a 30 that's totally up to you in your design uh, but again if you're worried about tripping the code has an allowance and it's going to allow me to go up to that 30 amp uh, and do it that way and size my conductors accordingly and using the small conductor rules it's going to force you to use a 10 gauge which is good for 30 amps anyway so it all works out. But that's how you would do it, whether or not you're using 422.13 as a minimum or using uh, 422.11E3 like we did for the maximum, okay? So just think of that. Minimum, maximum rules when you're dealing with a regular water heater, all right? All right, hopefully you got something out of that, learned a little something this lesson. If you want more information about our Fast Tracks program and all these lessons that you can get uh, with all these great illustrations down in the description you'll see a link to our website if you have any questions feel free to reach out to us it's not just for exam prep it's for people that want a more in-depth understanding of the national electrical code they want to get a more rounded understanding for on the job training and all that type of stuff this is the course you need all right folks till next time stay safe god bless <laughs>